It's good to see you this morning. Uh, we always appreciate you joining us uh, as we look at God's Word together. Um, we are into week 14 of lockdown, but as we've probably heard all together on the news, lockdown appears to be loosening up. And so we can pray towards that, that we may have time once again together as a church. So why don't we just begin our time in prayer and praise. Let's thank the Lord for his goodness to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of glory. You are the God of all that we see and understand around us. And we thank you, God, that you are perfect in every way and that we have the opportunity of moral perfection, not through our own efforts, but through faith in the one who is perfect and who came to save us from our sins. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can come before you this morning in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the faith that we have come to know, the faith and trust that comes in trusting in you for forgiveness and for eternal life. We thank you for the historicity of the cross, for its reality and for the fact that you suffered and died there as a sacrifice for all, all sin. And so Lord Jesus, this morning, we pray that we may commune with you and know you as we open up your timeless, perfect word. Help us to understand it, and Lord, may it bring us closer, and may it make us the worshipping people that you have designed us to be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let me read this morning, first of all from Jeremiah 31, and I'm going to read from verse 31 of Jeremiah 31, before we go to the next section in Mark. Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbour and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. Let's just turn through to the New Testament, and I'm going to read from verses 7 to 19 of Mark chapter 3. Verses 7 to 19 of Mark chapter 3. Jesus withdrew his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan, and from around Tyre and Sidon. And when the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him, and he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him, because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him and he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so they might be with him and might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, <coughs> James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanger, Boanger, Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot, 
and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Let's ask him for his help. Lord, we are reading something that happened in time. We understand this by faith and by the, the reliability of the scriptures. And Lord, we know that in your providence, you have done this for a purpose. You have sent your son for a perfect reason. And so this morning, as we examine your word once again, we pray that you would speak to us and demonstrate to us the reality of the risen Christ who we can meet with this very morning. Lord, help us and enthuse us and encourage us and give us new life and new reasoning through your word. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you like following crowds? There's been a lot of crowds throughout the UK and Ireland and indeed the States and other parts of the world as well over these last few days. And there's some, been some crowds that I haven't been able to meet until very recently when the football started up again. People like to be together. People like to share a common purpose. Since being in Mullockmean Baptist Church, I've got to know people, and as I've got to know people, I've got to understand who they like to follow. It may be a preacher, like Martin Lloyd-Jones. People appreciate him and follow his preaching. Or maybe Tim Keller over in New York. Some people have told me about websites that they follow avidly that maybe describe and explain things that the uh, news channels don't go into. We all like to follow something. We all like to follow the popular speaker or maybe go to the crowded church. There's not, nothing wrong with that, but to follow Jesus it always means much more than just going along with the crowds who follow him. You know, we've seen already that a lot of people didn't want Jesus at this point in Mark's Gospel. They should have wanted him. They should have welcomed him as the Messiah because all of his behaviour, all of his teaching so far in the first couple of chapters are clearly presenting him as the Messiah to people who should have known better. But what we read is that there was a growing number, especially amongst the Pharisees, who hated him because he wouldn't stick to their rules. And so now Jesus turns away from them, we read in verse 7 that we've just read this morning. Jesus then chooses 12 people to be his special disciples and most of the people around don't believe him. They're a bit like Israel of old. The Israel of the Old Testament that rejected God throughout their history and despised his prophets and the law. Likewise, they didn't really want Jesus. But despite that, Jesus has been very gracious to his beloved people to a people to whom he shared an ethnicity and a people who he's calling to become a new Israel, a new people to follow him. I want you to notice about how he begins this great call on people as he calls a people to himself. We see that he calls specifically 12 disciples and there's significance of course in 12 because we know that Israel of old was made up of 12 families, of 12 individuals who married and ended up becoming 12 individual tribes that made up the structure of Israel. And now Jesus is coming and calling 12 to himself. And so from now on, Jesus would take special care of these disciples as we go on through the Gospel of Mark. Of course, he still teaches the crowds those who will listen. But Jesus mostly concentrates on the 12 disciples. And that's amazing to think about. 
because his focus on those 12 men, they were to become those who would be the pillars of the church, those who would become the apostles through whom we receive our teaching today. So the main point this morning is that Jesus calls a people to himself and he is still doing that today. Jesus chooses who he wants to belong to this new family of God that will exist forever. Now Jesus was very popular. There's no denying that. As well as those who rejected him, the crowds followed him. And, and many people uh, went around and benefited from his kindness and his sympathies towards them as he healed them and as he cast out the demons. And as this is happening, you can see that there's a growing uh, fuss and, and, a, and a huge melee of people following Jesus at this point in his ministry. They were excited about him. They wanted Jesus to heal them. And in Mark 3 verse 7, we see that this was becoming so much so that Jesus left those who were opposed to him and also tried to at times avoid those who were following him because of his healing and because of his miracles. And so Jesus moves on. We see that he moves on from those who hate him particularly in verse 6 and who are seeking already with the Herodians to kill him. But many ordinary people still crowded near to Jesus. See in verse 7 and 8 how many people actually came. They came from all over, all around Galilee, from as far away as Idumea, which is around uh, the south of Judah, and from the northwest of Tyre and Sidon. Uh, people were coming from all, the whole circle around Galilee and wanting to see Jesus and have their lives improved by him. But even those who wanted him and wanted him for those reasons concerning themselves, soon they would leave him because they didn't like his teaching. But it's important to understand that the makeup of these crowds who followed him, a lot of them were in desperation. They were in poverty. The, the Roman Empire didn't uh, help them in their poverty. Back then, if you didn't work, you didn't eat. And if you got sick, there was no NHS. And so their people, these people were in such need. They were in huge need. And in the middle of all of this, though, we see Jesus choosing people. Many people think that we have to choose Jesus today. And that is partly true. But as we see in this section, in Jesus choosing the disciples, we see that Jesus always chooses us first. Now in John chapter 15 and verse 16, we read a very important verse. And it reminds us of this principle. Jesus says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. It's interesting, isn't it? For those of us who say we reject Jesus today, there is also maybe the disturbing question as to why that is so. Has Jesus overlooked certain people so that others he may choose? And the question for all of us this morning is, has Jesus spoken to us? Has he called us? Because that is clearly how people become Christians. It was always the case. Jesus calls a people to himself. And we must ask the Lord Jesus about that if we're not sure whether we know him or not. Yet we see in this passage that we have this great crowd following him 
in verses 7 to 8. And we see also in verse 9 of chapter 3 uh, that they are following him so much so that a boat had to be got ready for Jesus because the crowd was going to crush them. What need, what humanity in its deepest need was being confronted here. And we read that the crowd nonetheless, in verse 10, 11, didn't profess who Jesus was. In all of this cacophony, in all of this wanting to follow Jesus to benefit from his miracles, the, the penny didn't drop. They didn't get who he was. And they should have known, but their focus on Jesus was because of their needs and how Jesus could meet their needs. But as we go into verse 11, we see that there are some who see who Jesus really is. And who is it who sees who Jesus really is? Isn't this interesting? In verse 11, we read that it is the unclean spirits, the demons that were so prevalent and so common in the Decapolis, that area around the Galilee at that time. When they were in the presence of Jesus, they knew that he was the Son of God. And it is in the presence of Jesus that the true nature of evil in the world at that time becomes such a reality. It's exposed. The demons are exposed as they expose who Jesus is. It's not the crowds. It's not the people who are still so focused on how Jesus is going to help them and not who he is. And they are prostrate before him these unclean spirits. It's ironic, isn't it? That they know who Jesus is and they bow the knee to him even though the crowds are ignorant of who Jesus is. And we see Jesus' authority. We see Jesus dealing with those even opposed to him in the heavenly realms such as demonic activity. And he tells them to be quiet because he wants people to understand who he is without those opposed to him, these evil spirits, declaring it. It's amazing to see that. Jesus didn't want evil spirits to say who he was, we see in verse 12. And even Jesus did not say that he was the son of God. He wanted the crowds to see it. He wants you to see it. He's not pushy. But he calls us through his actions, through his life, through the historical reality of his death and resurrection to recognise who he is for our security beyond the grave. So we see that the crowds follow Jesus as Jesus calls a people to himself, but a lot of them didn't Come to Jesus. And then we see now in verses 13 to 19 that Jesus chooses a specific number of men that are going to, he's going to train throughout the rest of the gospel accounts. Jesus chooses 12. He leaves the crowds behind to choose these 12 special men out of those early disciples that were already following him. And Jesus knew that the crowds would soon leave him. He wanted them, men who would stay with him. And he chose them to be people who would truly believe in him. And he was going to teach them. He was going to show them what God really wants his people to be like. Jesus did not want them to be like those law-obsessed Pharisees with all of their rules. He was going to give them a new heart. He was going to give them a new mind and a new openness to his ways and indeed his presence in their life. And that's why we read from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34 this morning, because that is a very important text that bridges the Old Testament to the New Testament 
and shows that the fulfillment of the Old Testament is purely in the coming of Jesus, who fulfills God's promise in the Old to bring about a new covenant, a new arrangement between God and man that would centre on the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, who would deal with the fundamental problems that we all have before a holy God. And so we are all part of the new Israel as we come to Jesus. The new Israel, together, we come to under God as we trust in Christ. And it's made up of Jesus' followers from all nations. And we are all a fulfilment then of God's promise throughout the Old Testament in Jeremiah 31 to bring about a new people who would live forever with God. But these 12 men, what would they be like? They would be the pillars of the church. We would read more about them in Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. Uh, we would find out about how they would die in, in church history and also in the scriptures themselves. They would be sent by Jesus to work for him. They would belong to Jesus uh, in this new family. But what kind of people would they be? What kind of people would Jesus choose? Well, as we look at those names towards the end of our text this morning, we see a big mouth, a bit clumsy, and a bit foolhardy, Peter. We see James and John, nicknamed Sons of Thunder, obviously because they like to fight. Uh, they were aggressive. They were alpha males, if you like. We know that Matthew was a tax collector. In other words, he was a person who made money by being fraudulent and stealing. Thomas, we know, was the doubter who just couldn't accept the appearance of the resurrected Jesus to the other disciples until Jesus came to him and offered him to put his hands in his side and into his hands. We had Simon the Zealot, probably an ancient equivalent of an active IRA man who God had called to himself, even though he was wanting to fight for freedom from the occupying Romans. And there, of course, was Judas at the end, which we might have a chance to discuss a little bit more this evening when we meet on Zoom. So we've met some of them already as well in Mark's Gospel, but the conclusion we can come to is that they were not very good people. They were not people who were strict with their religion, we could say. They were not particularly educated people either. They were ordinary people. Some were fishermen, like James and John and Simon and Andrew. One was this tax collector who was hated by everybody. But we'll see that at first they often did fail as we go on throughout Mark's Gospel. But Jesus chose them. He brought them to be with him, just as he chooses people today. And he chose them to teach them and to change them, and in fact, involve them in his great call amongst the nations of the world today. They were the people that Jesus wanted. And they are the people who come when Jesus calls them. And we can be those people today as we respond in faith to the call of Jesus on our lives. Jesus calls who he wants. He is still calling a people to himself today across generations and across the nations. I pray that none of us miss that calling of Christ on our lives because he still calls those he wants. He chooses us not to be his apostles today but to follow him and he calls all sorts of people from our society. He calls criminals. He calls model citizens. He calls artists and the educated. He calls the disgruntled and the disabled and the unenlightened. He calls 
the L's and the G's and the B's and the T's and the Q's as well. Jesus calls everyone from the confusion and the cacophony of our society and he brings them into his church. He even calls heterosexuals. He calls us all. He calls unionists and nationalists and republicans. He calls whoever he wants to call. Because Christ is building a new Israel, a nation that will never end, where he is king and he reigns over all throughout eternity. Are you responding to that call? Jesus calls all people and he can forgive all people from the deepest shame and sin. That's why he came and died on the cross as he fulfills the whole of scripture in doing that he initiates the new covenant that we read at the beginning in Jeremiah 31 I want to issue that call to all of you this morning to be sure and to ensure that you have responded to the call of Christ he loves us he provides for us and he gives us life in his name. Let me just pray as we close. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are in control, not us. And we thank you, Father, that because of that, we can call out to you in faith and know life everlasting in your name. Help us, Lord, forgive us for our sins and cause us to turn to you afresh in these days knowing that you are our saviour creator and lord we ask in your name amen mm -hmm.